stop it. So if y'all will open up your Bibles if you had it, and we're going to start with the reading of the Word. Let me get some of the script. There it goes. <laughs> All right. And it is John chapter 11 and verse 38. Jesus therefore again groaning in himself, coming to the grave, it was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth bound, hand and foot with grave cloths, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Today I'm going to be talking about what has you bound? So I want you to shake your neighbor's hand today before you're seated and say, Loose him and let him go. Now, many people, y'all know the story of Lazarus. He was dead, but he was brought back to life. Well, this represents the church today. We were dead, but we're now alive. Many people today in the world, they think we're dead. But the truth is, the people in the church are just bound. So I'm going to preach today by being set free. So first off, before, before we are saved, we are dead. Before you accept Christ as your Savior, you have no hope. You're doomed for hell. But when we accept Jesus Christ, we are saved. We have life forevermore. So what was dead is now alive. Yeah. So I want to say, Lazarus, he represents the church today. We have life, but we appear dead. Lazarus was raised from the dead, but he still had grave cloths on him. He appeared still dead. In the church today, you say, oh, I'm saved. You come out of the tomb. You sit there and you say, oh, you know, I'm a Christian. I'm called. But the truth is, you still have the grave cloths on. You still associate with the world today. You don't know what the difference is. That's all right. Some of y'all, you still dress like the world. You even talk like the world, but you call yourself a Christian. You need to act like you profess. If you profess to be a Christian, you need to act like it. That's right, brother. Now, why do you appear dead? Too many times we want to do our things our way and not God's way. For many years, I could fake it. I could get on the drums. I'd play drums. I'd raise my hands, but that don't make me saved. Just because you're in the pew today, it doesn't mean you're saved. You can still be twice dead and plucked up by the root. That's you right. sit there. You sit in your seat. You, sometimes you want to say praise God, but you're going living like hell out during the week. You That's want to do right. anything you want. You want to be a part of the church, but a part of the world. Some of y'all want to sit there and say, why can't the Holy Ghost move? But you were sitting there drinking a week ago. That's you want to right, get brother. drunk off the wine of the world, but don't want to get drunk off the spirit. That's right, bro. Uh, my mom used to tell me this all the time. We always want to ride the fence. And I said, God, you know, what's going to happen when you ride the fence? All you're going to do is get a rash. <laughs> They're either going to pull you from one side or the other. You need to be hot or cold. The Bible states in Revelation 3.16, So then because that are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You need to realize you're either going to be hot for God or you're going to be cold and dead like the world. That's right, brother. There's a song we sing here, Wrapped up, tied up, tangled all up in God. But my second point is wrapped up, tied up, tangled all up in the world. Lazarus was alive, but he was still bound. Too many times we get saved, but we stay in the same mess. We want to sit there and say, God, why can't your spirit pour out on me? God, what's going to happen? But you know what? You stay in the same predicament. We had one person, they came to my dad. They say, preacher, on the phone. I'm like, oh, God, here it comes, one of those nuts. <laughs> they get on there and they say, preacher, the devil tempted me so much, I just had to drink. I, I said, God, you know you won't put more on me than I can bear, but you're sitting there in a bar saying, oh, God, deliver me, but you put yourself in that situation. That's right. And God, he's gave us life, but we're going back to the same place we once were. We have an encounter with God, but we don't have a relationship with him. 
Amen. You want right. to sit there and you want to meet somebody. You want to say, God, I want to just feel your spirit one more time. I used to play that role. We used to go to Shabbat, the Holy Spirit, and move on me. And I'd get on fire for God. The next week I was talking to whoever uh, was available. I was sitting there and I'd get drunk. And I'd sit there and I'd say, oh, I want to party. I want to live on the world. But I didn't have a relationship with God. I was backslidden. And another thing while we're bound up is because we allow people to tie us up. I've seen so many times you don't want to praise God if your neighbor ain't praising God. You want to sit there and if someone says, uh, you shouldn't be talking like that, you shouldn't be praising God like that, well, I hate to tell you, I'm not going to have a rock cry out in my place. I'm going to praise God anytime. Yeah. And uh, a woman came up to me and said, people looked at me when I was praising God the other day. And I said, well, that's good. Maybe they'll feel the fire get underneath their tail. <laughs> Well, Lazarus, if you look in the story, it says his hands were bound. So if your hands are bound today, you can't praise God. His feet were bound so he couldn't walk where God needed him to walk. His face was covered so he couldn't praise. When the enemy can hinder your praise, he's going to hinder your victory. That's right. If you can sit there and you can't praise God, he said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. I wonder how many times in the church today you allow somebody else to take your praise from you. You allow someone else to hinder you. And, uh, and some people, they'll sit there and they'll say, why can't I receive the Holy Ghost? I want to sit there and I want to get the Holy Ghost. I'm saved, but you ain't sanctified. Not what your Facebook post have been saying. That's right, bro. Some of y'all want to sit there and say, I'm going to praise God all I want. And I'm going to receive the Holy Ghost. No, you have to have a sanctified mind. You can't sit there and want to praise the devil one minute. I've seen so many Christians today, they're hypocrites. They want to sit there and they want to take over a class, but they're sitting there buying liquor from the ABC store. They want to sit there and you say, I want a position in the church. I want to sing in the choir. But you were posting a picture at a party the other night. And these are adults. This isn't teenagers. And, uh, so many times we've allowed our own desires to put out the fire. When you get saved, you become satisfied where you're at. So many times you want to sit there as Lazarus. He came out of the grave, but if Lazarus would have stood where he was at, he would have died because he was still bound. If you sit there and just stick with salvation, you're going to die where you're at. If you don't sit there and say, I'll get a hunger for God and grow, you get complacency, you're going to die. And too many times you want to sit there and say, oh God, I can stay where I'm at. No, you can't stay where you're at. That's why you're half dead in the church. That's right. That's right. You don't have a desire for sanctification. You want to remain bound. Too many times you're sitting there and you want to say, God, why can't you deliver me? He's already gave you the power. When he said Lazarus come out, that is not just the Lazarus. That's to the church. He has told the church, you need to get up out of your tomb. You need to get up from sleeping. Too many times a day the church is asleep. And that's the problem. You want to sit there on your tails. You don't want to praise God half the time. The Holy Spirit was moving on the Sunday. My dad took off shouting. Chris took off shouting. Mom took off shouting. I'm still playing drums. <laughs> but too many times half of y'all want to sit in your seat you don't want to praise God and it's not you, you can blame oh there's someone beside me you can blame the person next to you you can, you can even blame God that that's why you're so depressed but the enemy has you bound and today you need to be set free you need to stop caring about what the world thinks you need to care about what God thinks go ahead Sam that's alright you don't care about receiving the Holy Ghost. Many times you want to sit there and there's a song called Fill Me Up. Yeah. But instead of getting filled up with God, you want to get filled up with the world. You want to sit there and say, God, I want the Holy Spirit to move on your life, but it ain't the Holy Spirit. I told my mom, she didn't want me saying this, but since I'm in the pulpit, I can go ahead and say it. <laughs> I said, some of the people today, they said, I feel a stirring up in my soul. I said, no, what you feel is indigestion. <laughs> you were out there cussing a, a couple days ago. You were out there drinking a couple days ago. So don't be saying you feel God when That's you're sitting right. there playing with the devil. That's right, Sam. You don't need to sit there and say, God, I feel like I'm bound. The reason you're bound is because you've allowed yourself to be bound. God gave you the power to get up and walk out of that grave. He said, remove the grave cloth off. Remove the napkin. He's removed every hindrance that has been in your life. But the problem is, you want to stay bound. And I told, uh, I told Mom, I said, Mom, I ran from God. And since I've been teaching, three people got saved. And I was praying, I said, God, that's great. But why can't more? He said, if you'd have followed me, 
300 could be saved right now. Too many times you sit there and say, God, why is it taking me so long to get where I'm at? You need to get the distractions off your life. You need to get the grave cloths and let them fall off of you. If you remain in the world, you're going to die in your sins. That's right, brother. Too many times you want to sit there and I used to do it myself. I used to go up into the pew. I could raise my hands in church. Anybody can raise their hands in church. But do you have a relationship with God? I told uh, the teens this. I said, anybody can fake it. But it takes a real man to get in the altar and cry. And uh, I had a parent come up to me. They said, Sam. And I said, oh, God, where is this going to go? I said, Lord, they drunk some of this lake water. <laughs> Lord, help the paper mill got in their breath too. Ooh. Well, we were sitting there and uh, they said, my child, we can't get them in church. I said, you can't get your child in church. They said, yeah. I said, who's the parent? They want to sit there and they said, I want you to pray for my child. I, I want them to receive the Holy Ghost. How can they receive something they've never seen done in their own household? Their parents don't even have the Holy Ghost, so don't expect your children to get out of the bondage and the generational curse when you're still underneath it. And today I'll ask, what is, what is binding you today? You have backslid on your first love. You even have addictions on your life that has caused you to be bound. I want to let somebody know today, it doesn't matter what addiction you have, that God, when He died on the cross for you, that those addictions were set free. That the devil can't cross the bloodline. So if you are saved, the addictions, you can bring them to the altar today and nothing can hold you back. That's right. Sometimes you've allowed stuff to hinder your mind. You said... And some people say, God, I'm battling depression. No, you're battling oppression. If you're a Christian, you can fight anything that the devil's trying to come to you. That's right, bro. The devil, he wants to keep you bound for the purpose God has for you. He, I sat there for so long, and I was wondering, I said, God, I'm 19. I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost at 14 on a New Year's Eve service. Ever since then, I never spoke in tongues again because I backslid from God for so long. It took me till I was 19 to get refilled. I want to let somebody know today, you don't have to wait five more years to get uh, refilled. You don't have to wait five more minutes. You come to this altar today, God will sit there and refill you with the Holy Ghost like you never thought before. He will That's deliver right, you man. from every problem that you ever thought. He, yeah. Some of y'all say, oh, yeah. my, my marriage is in shambles. The reason your marriage is in shambles is because you can't even go to church for five minutes. You can do a five-minute prayer and expect a mountain to move. That's Jesus right. said if you had the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, that you can move mountains, but some of y'all's faith are so little you can't move a pebble. <laughs> some of y'all, y'all are seeking the Holy Ghost, but you're holding back. And today is the day to let go. Today is the day to let go of everything that's keeping you from God. Today is the day to be set free. Yeah. Too many times we want to sit there and play church. Yeah. That's not the way we're supposed to be. We are supposed to be Christians, first of all. So first off, act like a Christian. Amen. Second of all, you need to get sanctification back in your life. Because if you stay where you're at, you're going to remain twice dead and plucked up by the root. I told mom, I said, some people sit there and they wonder, they said, why can't a miracle happen like in the old days? It'd be a miracle if you got off your seat and you started clapping and praising God. <laughs> some of y'all just want to remain seated half the time. No, you don't remain seated. You praise God. You praise God when you feel like it. You praise God when you don't feel like it. Right? That's right, bro. <laughs> and today the question I asked people I said do you want to be set free I've had some people come up to me and they didn't want to be set free they wanted to remain dead they said I can get off the world I can just live like I want to and you can't some of y'all today and I know I was guilty when I was going to college at Emmanuel I didn't want to go to church on Sunday nights but some of y'all can't even make it on Sunday nights but you can make it to watch an NFL game Right. You can't make it to church when you say, God, I wonder if God gave you the same amount of time as you gave him, what prayers would get answered? That's right. That's right. So you want to sit there and you ask God, I want to be set free. But Jesus told the people to take the grave cloths off of Lazarus. And that's today what he's telling you. Do you want to be set free or are you going to allow the enemy to have you bound? And I was researching this and I was like, you know, what is something good to end the sermon? God, what is something that I can say that will make an impact that made an impact on me? And 
I don't know why, it was a song that I heard, and it said the grave couldn't hold them, death couldn't stop them, and today the bonds that have you bound, they're going to be broken. If death can't defeat Jesus Christ, then today nothing else can hold you. Nothing else can defeat you. Because when we go through the bloodline of Jesus Christ, there's nothing that can hold you back from God. There's nothing that can keep you bound.